Good evening. This is New Life Church of Faith, Sunday School Department, our adult class on today. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and also our Pastor Miller, Pastor Thomas W. Miller, and our First Lady Beverly Miller. This is our uh, adult Sunday School class, and my name is Sister Chris, and I will be teaching on today. So I give God all the glory, all the honor, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So we're now live, and we're going to begin to go to work on the lesson and the topic of our lesson, because Minister Odette started this. It's talked about be on watch, to be watchful. Amen. So, I, okay, it just went live. Hallelujah. So we're talking about being on watch, being aware of the times and the things that's going on about our environment and how we have this spirit of discernment and how we can discern the time to the time of the coming of the Lord. So let's go to work. If um, I'm sorry that you don't have a lesson because our PowerPoint, Minister Odette is enjoying her birthday, and I believe also her anniversary. So just follow along with me. So we're on for the class that's in the room. <laughs> yep, I'll bust you out even on Facebook. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, so we're going to be on page five for those that are in the room, and we're going to begin at the bottom part of the lesson. Amen. <clears throat> so here we go. Could someone do me a favor and see if we are live? Because I have no one on. <laughs> so I don't know if I need to reboot or what. Mm. Come back. Hallelujah. <coughs> oh, yeah, we're live. I got Minister uh, Deaconess Wally. Hallelujah. Good morning, Deaconess Wally. Thank you for tuning in. So I, I know I'm on the right page. So let's begin with a word of prayer. And like I always say, go to, let's go to work. Father God, I just thank you, Father God, for such an opportunity to stand before the for such a great people on today. Father God, I pray right now that I do decrease and you increase, Father God. Speak through me, Father God, what you want to teach your people, Father God, that may we hear what you have to say and that we be transformed into the image in which you want us to be. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we're going to be at the bottom of the page, and it reads... As this, we're in Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, I believe. Let me catch up so we're all on the same page. We're in First Corinthians, uh, chapter nine, and we're going to begin at the tenth verse. And we're talking about discernment, how to discern when God is speaking, how to discern the time that we're in of his coming. We need to be aware. We need to be watchful. We need to be alert because there's a lot of things going on that God is revealing the coming of the Christ. And a lot of times we're asleep. We're just going about our days. We're doing whatever we want to do. We're putting things aside and we're saying, I'll deal with that tomorrow. Are we prepared if God would come back right now in this moment? And we need to be watchful as children of God. And God has laid the foundation. He's left it here to teach us that he's soon to come. So it says, uh, 10, but God has revealed them through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. For what a man know, the, know the things of a man except a man. Like saying, nobody knows you except you. Nobody knows the deep things of you except you. So that's why God says it in that way. So it says, for what a man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So the spirit of God is the one who reveals who God is. So by having the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, he will reveal who God is. He will reveal the times that we're living in. Now, we have not received a spirit of the world, but the spirit who is of God, that, think that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. 
And that's what the Spirit of God begins to reveal in our lives, the things that God has revealed unto us. Let's go to the next page, beloved. Hallelujah. And I um, I believe the lessons are online. You can download them. If not, you there's always copies of the lessons in, in the church. And, and uh, you come get one if you're at home so you can actually have what we have when PowerPoint is not available. So here we are, verse 13. These things we also speak, not in the words which men of wisdom teach, but with the Holy Spirit teaching. He compares spiritual things with spiritual things. That's how God speaks. He speaks spiritual things through spiritual things. We need to get out of the concept of God is speaking in a way to, you know, a lot of times we're caught up in how we feel. It's a feeling. It's, it's an emotion. It's all these things. But God confirms himself through his word. He's always confirming himself through his word. But the nature of, but a natural man, a man that is not born again, he, he does not receive the things of the spirit of God for their foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they're spiritually discerned. They're spiritually understood through the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can reveal to you God's heart, God's plan. And it's revealed through what? Through the Word. That's why we must line up the things through the Word of God. If we don't line them up through the Word of God, then how are we able to compare the things of God? Are you playing with your phone? Me? Yeah. No. Okay, what you doing? Okay, I didn't know. I'm in my, the youth during the class. I'm still being teacher Chris with him. But he who is spiritually judges all things, yet he himself is rightfully judged. That's a powerful statement. He that is spiritual judges all things, but he is rightfully judged by no one. Wow, that's a really powerful statement, I would think. Why is that powerful? Because if you've been led of the Spirit, then you're judging things spiritually. That should give us confidence because there's many things that we see throughout the day. And God says we line it up with the word. Remember how God said we're to judge each other by their fruits. Spiritually judging one another by the fruit of God and what they're doing. Are their life lining up with the word of God? And I say, we God say, mark the perfect man, which is Jesus Christ, to mark him. So how do I mark the perfect man? I begin to meditate on the word of God. I begin to allow the spirit to quicken me when there's something that he wants me to do to obey him and not deal with the consequences. I like what Charles Stanley say, obey God and let him deal with all the consequences. Being able to be very movable and doing the things of God. It's just like I've said before in Wednesday night before Son, uh, Bible study, how God has spoke to me about opening up the doors of the church for 30 days. He said, open them up. And you be here from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. And when God spoke that, I didn't even question God. I didn't question at all. The only thing I question is, Lord, how am I to fast? Because I did not know, did he want me to fast a total 30 days and partake of nothing? What did you want? And he said, I want you to partake of no food. Until 10 o'clock at night when you walk out of that door, I want you to consecrate yourself unto me and just drink water on behalf of what I'm going to do. God didn't reveal all the things that he would do during this, during this obedience stage. I didn't have a total understanding of it all, but I thank God that we were obedient. Me and Minister Charlene was here the other day, and a young woman came in, and she was grieving. If those doors were not open... I would have missed that. I would have missed that opportunity. I would have missed it because God had spoken it. I believe that's why we don't move forward at time with God because we're so concerned about the outcome. They're spiritually discerned. The Spirit spoke that to me. How do I line up, up, up with the Word of God? My house shall be a house of prayer. My house shall be a house of prayer. That's how I was lined up with the word of God. My house will be a house of prayer. So I say, yes, Lord. See, we're so busy trying to get the answer of why God wants us to do something and simply obey. The closer you get to God, 
the more you be able to recognize his voice above all the other ones. Yes, Elk. <laughs> I said, the closer that you get to God, the more you will be able to recognize his voice. And it's in those acts of obedience. It's in the acts of obedience. That's how God said, you I know that you love me when you obey me. Your love for God is demonstrated in your obedience. Amen. It's demonstrated in your obedience. Not just thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal. But if he say, go down the street, just go around the corner. Just stand there. Just do this. Don't put that on. Don't wear that. Those things, those simple acts of obedience, is the ones that we need to walk in instead of walking in that sin of omission. The sin of omission is when you, you know you should have did something, and then you wake up and you're done with your day, and you're like, man, I didn't do it. That's omission that you turned away, and you just willingly did not obey. That is the sin of omission. I thank God for that. He's been teaching me those principles and what they are because I need strong me because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's the beginning of wisdom. We fear so many other things. We need to fear this God whom we love. Hallelujah. Verse 30, we're on page 12, beloved. Anyone who just walked in the room and we on the place talking about how we're the spirit and with soul and with the body. And even in those demonstrations, I, sh I showed that it's a spiritual led. I, I, didn't, I didn't confer with my, with my flesh when God said fast. I didn't care what my flesh thought. I didn't care. I didn't give an excuse to it. It used to be in times I was like, oh, Lord, are you fasting? Oh, my God. But now it's to the place I'm like, okay, how do you want me to do it? It's that response how Mary had when she went, when, uh, when the, Gabriel, the uh, angel Gabriel came to her and said, you're about to have a child. Mary's response was, how shall that be? She didn't question it. She just needed an understanding because she didn't know a man. So God said, the Holy Spirit will send on you and it will fill you with the Holy Spirit spirit and you will become pregnant and she just bowed and said unto you she just said thy handmaiden yields to you we should be like that with God we should be yielding to him but he who is spiritually judges all things but yet himself is rightfully judged by no one for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of Christ who knows the mind of God that we may instruct him I love that because as I've been spending time in this, this prayer, where I'm getting to the place in prayer that I'm not telling God how to perform something in someone's life. I'm yielding to God and I'm saying, Lord, what is it that you want for their life? I don't want to say something. I want to ask you, you know, Lord, set, deliver my, you know, deliver my son from drugs. I know that it's God's perfect plan. I'm just hypothetically saying this. But I want to go into that prayer and he'll begin to say, Lord, teach me to pray. Lord, I need you. Holy Spirit, move within his heart and reveal yourself to him. Reveal who you are, God, to him. Reveal the love that you have for him, God. If we can accept the love of God, then we can begin to be transformed by God. Because it's the love, it's the thing that makes that person go out and do those drugs. It is the thing that they're going and that they're seeking after. Lord, I need them to, your love will overweigh that. Because I knew when I was in the world and I used to drink and stuff, I was trying to escape reality. So Lord, tell me what is he trying to escape? What is the trigger, God, that he's trying to escape? So that I can line up my prayer with your prayer, God. So now I'm not just playing, praying a mist. I'm not just saying anything and wasting time. I want to be able to pray according to the will of God. And the only one could do that is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God is the only one who can do that. Coming before Him and not instructing Him, but yielding to Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How do we spiritually discern? the Lord's return, so that we remain aware. We examine and we judge it by
by the word of God. So that's how we begin to discern. We discern it by what? The word of God. Sister, you could come sit at the table. Could one of the young men get her chair? Somebody sit now. Yeah. Amen. I, I have Yes, mother people are entering, entering into the Sunday school room, and we, we truly welcome everybody to come and sit among us. Come and sit in this place. Hearing the word is like starting your day out right. Hallelujah. And it takes the saints of God to come in the house of God, and especially the leadership. I can go there because I'm leadership, and I'm going to go there. We should be present in the room because it matters to the congregation. When they see us here, it matters. We expect Pastor Miller to be on that podium every Sunday. Then we should expect, I mean, I'm telling what God expects from me. He expects me to be available. If I went here at church for two Sundays, what would y'all be thinking? Where's Mr. Chris? Where's Mr. Chris? What's going on? What's up? <laughs> Where you at? Well, guess what? It's important. We lead by example, and I'm going to get you one minute because I love this statement by uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> Hallelujah. With great power come great responsibility. How do I line that up when I hear something like that? Much given, much required. It's lined up by the word. Minister Philpot, you have the floor. <laughs> He's laughing. <laughs> And, you know, um, being led by the Spirit and letting the Word of God be your guide. Mm -hmm. You know, the Word, of, we hear so many voices. Mm -hmm. We have voices from the Internet. We hear voices from TV. We hear voices from within ourselves. Yes. That's not of God. But when we humble ourselves. Mm-hmm. And in meditation and, and, and in studying, um, just let the word engulf us. Amen. You know, just take control. It's hard because we've been programmed mm -hmm. all our lives for a certain way. And TV says this and that and the third. Um, but when Mm -hmm. All right. Look, mm -hmm. right. God is your master. All things are possible. Mm -hmm. Amen. Through Him, all things are possible. You know, and being available is very, very. Yes, I feel that. Amen. Amen. I didn't even. I don't know where I was at when I heard about the, the, the prayer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know where I was at, but Amen. I heard it. Yes. Amen. Because I, I love to pray. Amen. I love to talk to God. Amen. And have him talk to me. Back. Yes. Amen. You know. Yes. A amen. Any more comments in the room? I yes, Minister Tia. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I was, uh, you had, you were speaking on um, Mary. Mm -hmm. Mary and how when the angel came yes. to her and, and, um, her response when the angel came to her and said that she would bore the son. Yes. And she and her response was, How will this be? Yes. I was I was reading or comparing her response with the response of um, what's Elizabeth's husband's name? Uh, uh she bore she yeah. bore John the Baptist. Yes. Uh -huh. But but yes. Yeah. Say exactly good. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's her name, Mary? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yeah, the husband. Anyway, yeah. the husband. That's exactly right. And I was just, I was just comparing we their need responses <laughs> yes. when the angel came yes. to them. And the husband doubted. He yes. doubted, and his he he was not able to speak. Yes. For a certain period of time. Yes. Um, and he doubted. Um, but when the angel came to Mary, yes. all she said was, how would this be? Mm. So, you know, she had faith to believe, mm. you know, and I was just comparing their responses. Yes. And how when, when God reveals or when mm -hmm. he does come before us, it's, it's important for us to believe him. Amen. You know, it's important for us to not, not doubt him. 
But anyway, I was just comparing their responses yes. and how they had two different responses and there were consequences for Amen. both of them. So what if Mary doubted? Maybe mm -hmm. we wouldn't have Jesus. I don't know. Yes. But she didn't. Amen. So glory be to I God. I love you bringing that yes. out because one thing you need to realize, beloved, God does not ask us to do anything that through him we cannot do it. Yes. God is not going to ask you to do anything that through him Amen. you can't do it. Amen. Because he, he knows what you're capable mm -hmm. of doing. It's like we respond the same way when we tell a child, could you go in there and do that? No. We know their capability. My grandson, Jaden, you know, he love to cook. <laughs> and he can watch the bacon. He really can. He knows exactly how to do it. I have no fears or nothing. <laughs> because he's capable of doing it. And he's not, I don't bound him by his age. I'm looking at him by his experience and his knowledge. And that's what God does. He compares your experience, your knowledge. And he's still trying to raise you up to a greater level of an intimacy with him. Because in that intimacy, it's going to make you respond. I love him so much, so I'll, I'll respond. Because I want to make him smile. I want them pleased. And I cannot tell you how much this, I got nine, it's nine more days. And I cannot tell you how much it has blessed my life. It has knitted me and my husband together closer. God didn't tell me that would happen when I do it. Did it. He just said, just do it. And he has knitted my love for my husband. And we've been closer. It's been so beautiful. I just, I'm so grateful for the open door. He didn't tell me that, but he knew in his heart what he would do if she just do it. Some people who have walked through have been broken and they come here and they sit, but I just, God has allowed. When people walk through the door, he has allowed the way his heart feels. He more or less bathes me with what his heart feels when they walk in. And I literally weep because he says, this is what I want. This is how I love them. And I sit and I just cry because I'm like, Lord, you're allowing me to experience your heart. No one knows that, but the spirit of God and God wants to reveal that to us. Amen. And it's a quiet place where you can hear that removes the distractions. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So we know that God responds through his word. And Minister Odette, as she was training me about her lesson, she says she loves to cook. And she loves to sift through with the sifter. And she loves to sift through. And we need to be sifted. Mm -hmm. I'm not a baker. If a baker in a room, you can teach all day. Give me a parable with it. But to sift through. What are we sifting out? Those impurities, those voices that are really not God. Sifting out. God said, bring every thought into the obedience of Christ. Let's sift that th thought. Sift it through until it lines up with the word of God. Sift it through until it lines up with his will for your life. Sift it through. Be obedient. Be willing to move quickly. That's what we need to do. We need to be moving quickly on the things of God. Amen. Let's go over to page 14. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read Matthew chapter 24. All of you have one. And I'm reading from the um, Illinois Standard Version. And we're going to go scripture walking down this lesson. And I pray if there's anything I forgot to say, Minister Odette, she'll be back and she can take the floor and she can impart those other nuggets that I know God has put within her. So we're in the book of Matthew, beloved, chapter 24. This is the King, the English Standard Version. This is the one God gave me because it was easily to understand. His word should be very understand. So we're going to begin at um, the beginning. Now, Jesus foretold the destruction of the temple. Jesus left the temple 
and was going away and his disciples, they came to, to point out to him that the, the building of the temple. And he answered them, you see all these things do you not. Truly, I say to you, there will be not, there will not be left one stone upon another that will not be torn down. And they're looking at the natural temple. And we want to be watchful. We want to look at what is going on in the land and the coming of Christ. God has left this on record so that we would not be ignorant and that we would not be deceived. So verse 3 says, As he sat on the Mount of Olives, his disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us when will these things be? And what will be the signs of the coming of the end of age? The coming of Christ. And God begins to reveal the signs. And let's look at them and let's see, are some of those things happening today? We should be watchful. We should be God is God does not want us to miss it. We will never stand before him and say, oh, I didn't know. The problem is we think we have time to get it together. Stop letting the enemy tell you, you got time to get it right. You got time to wait till tomorrow. You got time to do it later. They did a survey over a hundred older people. And mo the one question that most of them answered, if it's something they could have right now, what would it be? And what did they say? Time. Because they knew they were closer to death. And you can't get back time. No. You can't get back time. You're going to miss it. Like in praise and worship, you can't get back time. That's why I love to worship. I love to scream. I love to yell. I love to have a good old time. I don't care what nobody else thinks. I'm going to worship my God. I'm going to have me a good time in the presence of God. I don't care what nobody thinks because his presence is there. Like when pastors say he's in the room, I'm going to get mine. Amen. Amen. You can say all day, Sister Chris is all day. I don't care. I don't care because I need him. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's make room at the table. We got more people coming. Pastor Miller, they filling up the church. Hallelujah. Okay, let's keep going forward. And Jesus answered him, answered them, see that no one leads you astray. That's the number one thought. Let's keep that in mind. Let nobody lead you astray. In the King James Bible, it says deceive. So y'all know I look up this, the word deceive. And deceive means to cause someone to believe something that is not true. Typically in order to gain, some, to gain a personal advantage. To Say it, speak up. To manipulate them. Yeah, manipulate. Deceive them. Remember when was the first deception took place? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve. He deceived her. So God is saying, first of all, before we get into this whole lesson, don't be deceived. Amen. Don't be fooled. Don't you be tricked. Don't be fooled. We're talking about wake up, be aware. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, God. Turn the light on. I was like, Lord, why is this light working? Hallelujah. So here we are. He said, don't be astray. For many will come in my name saying that I'm a Christ, and they will lead many astray. Many false prophets have rose. Many people have died because they said that the, the, they are the Christ. He said, many of them are going to rise. So don't, don't be aware. Don't be deceived, church. These things are going to happen. Yeah. Why is this happening, God? Why is this happening, God? Because this is him, his self, revealing the revelation. He's revealing through discernment in his word. He's telling us straight to the point. Like I say, he's shooting from the hip. He ain't holding nothing back. He say, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Is that happening right now or not? Oh, yeah. Is it not happening? Wake up. He's trying to come. Wars and rumors of war. See that you are not, see that you are not armed, uh, alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. Look at God. Don't get upset. Don't get all frustrated. But this ain't the end yet. So we're looking at the time we're in now, and God said, this ain't the end yet. 
Don't be alarmed. Don't get upset. Don't get mad. Don't start being hard hearted. Don't get in the wrong boat. Don't get off the lane. Don't stop putting your hand on the plow. Keep your hand on the plow. Keep moving forward because these things must take place. Nations will rise against nations and kingdoms against demon kingdoms and there will be famine. There will be earthquake in various places. Is that not happening? Don't get alarmed. Don't get distrayed. There's more coming. There's more coming. Sister Brenda said there's more coming. He said all these things are the beginning of birth pains. Now I know the, the roughest birth I had was my first. <laughs> He's born in a blizzard. I, he was. We couldn't even get down the highway. We had to go to the base. The base I lived in Rantoul, the base on Chanute Air Force Base. Took me 19 hours to birth that boy out. 19 hours to birth him out. Labor pains. See, we're in labor pains. But the end is not yet. He said, this is beginning of the labor pains. And we as women, I don't know about all y'all, but in the beginning, the contraction wasn't hitting me that tough. But by the time he came out, they was hitting real tough. I was like, I remember one time I was trying to birth my son, Dominique, and they say, we're going to get the doctor. I looked at the nurse. I say, this baby, and me and you for the have it. And I started pushing. Doctor ran in, just caught him. I say, we for the go. Because it was at that point. But he said, these are the beginnings of birthing pain, pains. He said, then they will deliver you up for tribulations and be put to death. And you will be hated of all nation for my name's sake. Now I begin to look at that. And as I begin to look at there are 52 countries that people, they can't talk about our Jesus. They got to hide and, and talk about our Jesus. Minister of that, when she was uh, imparting in me what she wanted to, what God had put within her about this lesson. And she said, like, and I know in China, you know how they worship and we can worship high, but this is how they worship. They can't even project their voice because they will be in prison and beaten talking about this Jesus. And shame on us that we come in here with the liberties that we have. And the praise team still got to tell us to raise your hand and worship this God. I question where your relationship is. Amen. I question, are you watchful? I question, I'm not saying that you got to be loud like me because I'm just loud. Hallelujah. I'm trying to make sure he hear me. <laughs> and I know that he do. But there was a time I sat in silence. And God said, if you embarrass before me and me, and I'll be embarrassed before you before my father. I said, hey, Jesus. I didn't want no embarrassment. I don't care. Hallelujah. So we have these 52 countries. Verse 10. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. He's talking about the body of Christ. He's not talking about the unsaved. Do we see, is that happening now? Many people are falling away and they're stabbing you in the back along the way as they're going and we're wondering, God, why is people treating me this way? God has already left it on record. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. They're going to do it. God's left it on record. Go ahead, young man. Yes. I was thinking about this, um, this falling away. Yes. And he was talking about giving heed to me to do his spirit. Mm -hmm. I, I like totally believe it. I wasn't brought up in church, but when I first came here like 10 years ago, I remember, and they prayed for me and my family. Mm -hmm. I forget this place, so I just came back and I came here. But I say that to say, this fall, the falling away is real because it happened with me and it just it bring like something to my mind that everything that he did for me and I will try to go back out mm -hmm. there and grab something that's dying. The world is dying. They yes. don't even know what they're dealing with. They believe that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. But mm -hmm. they think he really with them and he got them and he giving them all this knowledge, these kids with all this knowledge, because everything is in this phone they can get to. Yes. And it's just so disastrous that God, in his infinite wisdom, yeah. is still in control. Yes. 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 
Hey, man. I'm telling you, my family, I said, y'all running around. The man is in control. He's not no old man sitting around somewhere. He That's allowing right. this to happen because they did away with him. He said, okay, go ahead. Y'all mm -hmm. y'all gonna play the word? Are you gonna get you a man? You gonna get mm -hmm. you another one? Go ahead, mm -hmm. man. Let me show you what's gonna happen. Amen. He allowing this stuff to happen. All yes. this disease and all this famine, he is doing that. Yeah. Yeah, the enemy, we open up the door to that. Do what? We're opening up the door. We have Believe caused God, this to be. It's just, it's just without the Holy Spirit, you can't. You mm -mm. can't please him. I'm, I'm no match for this body. I'm, I'm fighting. I'm pressing <laughs> towards everything, but I'm no match for it. I can read the Bible all day long without his spirit and joining with the word and him revealing the word to me. And I hear it in my heart. I can't do it. I, Amen. I fall every time I try. Yeah. Yes. Amen. I keep coming. He says, better if I get in and flow on a piece of wood. <laughs> yes. I, yes. I, yes. I feel a peace. I'm sure. Hallelujah. Thank you. That's why that's why you need to come in the room if you can't hear this young man. He is on fire for God. That's why you need to come in the room so you can hear what they say because I can't make my phone no louder. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hello, Sister Miller. Thank you for giving us that. Okay, here we go. Verse 11. Flip the page, beloveds. It says, and many false prophets will rise and lead many astray. And and become lawlessness will increase. Has lawlessness increased in our land? This lawlessness has increased. And the love of many will go cold. And when I looked up the word, I'm like, Lord, I like that word cold. And he said, I said, Lord, what do you mean by that? He said, they have lost their warmth. Because love is warm. Compassion is warm. Kindness is warm. When you walk away from somebody speaking to you in love, you walk away feeling good. You walk away feeling uplifted. But coldness has no warmth. Mm -hmm. It's just cold. cold. It's bitter. It's dark. He said that many are going to grow cold. He said, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the gospel, here is the key. We're in the birthing pains. Here it is the key. And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a about the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. When will it come? When the word of God is preached to every nation. There are 52 nations that people are hiding to know our God. But we're in a time of technology. We're in a time of technology where the gospel can be spread. God is just waiting on them to get the word. God is just waiting on them to have an opportunity to accept him as his Lord and Savior. And we're sitting here thinking, we got time. And the only reason God is allowing time to go in, he has set time as his master. He is set right there and say, as soon as that last one, hear my word. We think we got, go ahead, Minister Charlene. And you know, that's surely happening. Um, I just happened to be on my phone last week. Mm -hmm. And there's, I don't know how many places there are, but some indigenous places. Yes. They have found technology. Well, no, it wasn't technology. They did not have the Bible in their language. Yes. Um, I got this off of, I'll tell you where I got it from. American Bible Society, mm -hmm. where you can give Bibles to troops and yes. foreign countries. And it told this story that now the Bible has been translated into their language, which they never had access mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. it before. And you know, what you're talking about, the time is that we don't believe what we can't see. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's happening. Mm -hmm. Yes. People are getting the word that never were getting it before. And like you said, we still think we have time. We do. And we should, everything is being revealed right before our eyes. Mm -hmm. God has revealed it right before our aunt, aunt yes. eyes. The abomination and the desolation. So when you see the abomination and the desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place, let's read and understand. Then let those who are in Judah flee to the mountains. Let the one 
who is on top on the housetop not go down to take not to, down to take what's in his house see when God, Jesus cracked the sky you ain't going to be able to get nothing and let the one who is in the field take back uh, turn and take back his cloak and arise and uh, and also the woman who is pregnant and those who are nursing an infant in these days. My God, we're living in such a time they can't even get Similax on the shelf. See, God is so great in his awesome wisdom. He made a woman to create milk within her, within her body. He did it intentionally because he said when the time comes, they're not even going to have milk to give the baby. But I have created within a woman what the baby needs. The kindness of God. The love of God. Mm -hmm. But we still have people. I'm not nursing my baby. You, I thank God my daughter's nursed their baby. I thank God my daughter Donna's nursing her baby. She ain't got to worry about no milk because she's nursing her baby. God has created within the milk antibiotics for your children to right. fight off diseases. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look, at, look at the yeah. awesomeness of God. Amen. Go ahead, young man. You know why they're doing that with the milk? Mm -mm. Because they're trying to stop kids from coming in because the less people, the more they can control. If they, if people keep having kids, then there's going to be more people they have to control. Wow. That's why they're trying to stop and eliminate people. They really are. The devil is using them. The spiritual women yeah. in high places. They have up. Amen. Man, they doing some real nasty things. I'm yeah. serious. He didn't, I, I read this thing on the internet. I'm going to get you off track, but they digging down. God got a barrier. Down on this earth, they didn't found a way to go down. The enemy then gave them mm -mm. this knowledge that he telling them that he with them the occult. It's yeah. occult knowledge. They tapping into things. They sacrificing and doing things mm -mm. that's utterly destructive. We don't know. Everybody playing. They wait for CNN. They waiting for the news mm -hmm. to tell y'all. Yes, yes. The Antichrist. They not gonna tell you. He here mm -hmm. already. Stop looking for the news. Yes, that, right. Them people, they touch that barrier, and they letting them demons out. They, 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 they touching stuff, wrong things. That's why these kids acting. These kids now they mm -hmm. playing with the kids. They want the youth. They getting them young. They destroying them. They, they making a disconnection from the people who's been here before and the people who here now. If I tell a young man, hey, I did that. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm telling you, I've been there. It's wrong. You're not going to be in there. They make it a disconnection. Amen. They're touching that demonic yes. stuff. They're touching them yes. demons, man. That's why these kids, you, your kid will step to you and you got to take care of them. That's right. You, you, they, you it's, know. it's wickedness. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. It's wickedness yeah. in high places. Yeah. They, they, they know how to break that barrier. Yes. That's what he said, but yeah. I, they, they touch it. Yes. I really like your comment when you said that God made woman to produce milk. Yes. And there is no greater scientist and than the Lord. Yes. That knows the future. Mm -hmm. That knows what we need to actually be within our DNA. Yes. That woman uh, produces, come together with the man and they produce a child. And those DNAs are separate from everybody. Mm. But even within that DNA, God has made milk mm. yes. from that woman, from that child. Mm. Yes. So, what the devil meant for evil with the Similac. Yes. With God <laughs> turned around and some of them had to start yes. giving the milk that God made. Yes. We, you cannot be or duplicate what God no, has put mm -hmm. in the blueprint. You what cannot. God has placed in the DNA. Mm -hmm. So God always has our back. Yes. And while they're they were going through the pain, they do like a lot of people, they never look at the lesson behind the pain. That's true. Because there is a lesson in it. There is, there a, is lesson. a lesson. Amen. And we should. We should be aware of the times. Yeah. We should. Because God has provided provision. Yes. See, the reason we're teaching this not to make you afraid. God is showing a warning. It's just like a child as they're growing up. We tell them don't touch the soap. We, we set the warning of what could happen if you do. God is setting on a warning. The sirens are blasting. And are we spiritually discerned to hear the sirens? And you know, the first Tuesday every month you hear those sirens. It's there's a siren in your spirit that is going off. 
There's a siren in mine that's going off. Amen. It's going off. And I hear it. Not with fear, but getting prepared for the coming of Christ. Because no one is going to stand before him but you and you alone. Amen. I got to stand on my own and everybody else got to stand on their own. The parable of the five virgins. Are you going to be wise or are you going to be foolish? I'm determined to be wise. Amen. I am determined. He said, for as a woman who is pregnant in these days. Okay, I did do that, didn't I? Okay, let's flip over, beloved. Verse 21. For these things, for, the, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not, not been for the beginning of the world until now, and never will be. And if these days had been cut short, no human, human would be saved. And for the sake of the leap, these days will be shortened. You can't tell me the days ain't going fast. You can't tell me the time is not speeding up. This is God revealing itself through discernment. Time is speeding up. He said, man, it seemed like it was just, God is speeding it up for us so that we can make it. God is speeding it up for his church so they can make it. God has speeded it up. Are we aware? Are we watchful? Can we discern the time? God is speeding it up. We need to be aware. It ain't a coincidence. God left it on record. Hallelujah. Discerning things through the word of God. And if, okay, verse 23 then if anyone say to you, look, here is the Christ, or there, there he is, do not believe him. What you just hear? If someone come to you and say, hey, I saw this man, this is the Christ. God said, that ain't him. Mm. That ain't him. He's get, making us alert. Don't let nobody come to you and say, hey, I found Christ. Jesus, God said, that's not him. Why is that important? Because this Antichrist, he's going to be raised where? In the church. He's going to be in the church. See, the church, the enemy got us so fooled thinking that the Antichrist is going to be this man out there. He's going to be raised in the church. He's slick and he's cunning. Mm -hmm. What better place to put him than in the church? What better place to hide than amongst them? A sheep in wolf's clothing. What better place is there? And then he said, or there, he said, do verse 24, for false Christ and fa for false Christ and false prophets will also arise, performing what? Great signs and wonders. He's going to perform great signs and wonders. Of course, the church would believe that's him. He's raising the dead. He's doing all these work. He's performing great signs and wonders, but he's not the Christ. If God uses you to do anything, it's all about him. Amen. It's all about him. Don't get fixated on a person. Amen. Don't get involved in a person. It's the Christ. If I teach anything, it's because of what God has flowed through me. It ain't Sister Chris. It ain't Teacher Chris. It's the Holy Spirit in me flowing through me to deliver a word that's comprehensive to our understanding. It is not me. It is the Christ that liveth in me that I yield to him. And I say, God, use this clay for your glory. Because what I'm teaching you is a double-edged sword. And it cuts me just like it cuts you. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, if it's possible, he will, he will lead the very elite astray. He will lead them astray. People that's been rooted and grounded in the church, he'll lead them astray. God is sounding an alarm. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. He says, see, I have told you beforehand. He said, now I have told you, didn't I tell you that this is going to happen? Why are you acting like you didn't know? It's like when my kids come to, come and ask me something, why you act like you didn't know? I work at a women's shelter, and I lay the rules down to the ladies, and I tell them what they can do and what they can't do. And then we got to sit around the round table because we got an issue. I say, Did you, what do you know? And they try to act like they didn't know. I say, but you knew. You knew. People try to play dumb mm -hmm. because they want to, because they want to hide behind their insecurities. Yes. We want to play dumb. We ain't going to play dumb.
dumb with God. We're not going to play dumb when Jesus cracks the sky. You're not going to be able to play dumb then. Because on this day, this what? Is this the first of the month? Is this the first day or the last day? The last, the last day of the month. In this classroom, you've been told. What they say, you've been served. Yes. You've been served the table. A plate before you. Warning, be alert. Hallelujah, glory to God. He said, I've told you beforehand. So if they say to you, look, he's in the wilderness. Don't go. He's in California. Don't go. He's in New York. Don't you go. Man, come see this man. This must be Jesus. Don't go. Amen, amen. He can't make it no more plainer than that. Mm -hmm. He said, don't go. It's got to be Jesus. It's got to be him. Here we are. If they say, look, in, look, he is in the inner room, do not believe. How many warnings is God telling us? People, that's why people are going astray. People leave churches that God has rooted and grounded them in. And because you don't like the message, because it don't tickle your ear, you run off because God said they'll leave and find pastors that tickle their ears. That glamorize their sin. That make them feel good. I thank you Jesus. That my pastor never waters it down. And don't you ever water down the word of God. Shoot from the hip. Hallelujah. He said for as lightning come from the east. And it shineth. Shineth from far from the west. So will the coming of the sun be. Wherever the coat. Is that right? Wherever the cul culprit is and the variances will gather. So God is saying lightning is going to strike in the sky. We're going to see Jesus descend from the sky. We're going to behold him as he comes down. That's what Jesus is saying. We have technology and we're not, we're not at, the, at the place where we see him come down. We will see it on the news. When the towers came down, we saw, the, we saw those towers come down. We wasn't present in the room when we saw them come down. We saw videos of the planes hitting the towers and we saw them crumble. We're living in an age where technology will allow us to see the coming Savior. Because he's going to come. Immediately after the tribulations of these days, the sun will be darkened. And the, and immediately, okay, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the grounds and the heavens will shake. I don't want to be here. Because we think we got time. Hallelujah. He said, then will appear from heaven the sign of the Son of Man. And then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming from a cloud from heaven. With the power and great glory. We will see him descend from heaven. Yes. Don't you follow a man. The word of God has made it very plain. The problem is. You know why we waver? Because of time. They've been preaching this all this time. They've been saying that all this time. It has not happened yet. I got time. Don't let the enemy fool you with time. Because you don't have time. God said it's appointed to man to, to be born and appointed time for him to die. We don't know when our ship going to come in. Many people went to sleep last night and didn't wake up because they thought they had time. Is your house in order? And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet and call, and they will gather the elite from the four winds and the end and four ends and the one end of heaven to another. Jesus is going to bring us all together. He's going to gather up his saints. He's going to gather us up from the four ends. He's going to gather up his saints. That's the picture that you should have in mind. Because we don't know. It might be a loud trumpet thing. This earth can darken and the sun loses light. The moon, we're like, what is going on? It'll be too late. We need to get it together now. He said in verse 32, it says, For the fig tree, learn this lesson. As soon as the branches become tender and put out its leaves, you know that summer is here. He's giving you a parable. Why does God speak in parables? Because his thoughts is higher than our thoughts. So he got to bring it down to a dumber level so we can understand. 
And that's the truth because he said, my heights are so far than your height, your thoughts. So he's got to bring it down to a simple way, like he's talking to a baby. Why do you think he calls children so much when he addresses us in the Bible? Because we're children. So he said, look at this fig tree. And so also when you see these things, you know that he is near, he's at the gate. Truly I say this, generation will not pass away until all these things will take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. God said all these things are going to take place. Yeah, I can guarantee you, it's going to take place. But my word is the thing that stands. He say, but concerning the days and the hours, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven or the sun. We don't know. God's just giving us a sign. God didn't even tell Jesus because Jesus probably would have told us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's one thing God holds on his own. That's one thing God, God's going to tell Jesus when it's time to come. That's one thing that only God and him alone will know. But he's given us a sign so that we may be aware. He say, but the Father, for as, for as we the day, it's of Noah, will come for the Son of Man. This is another parable. He says it's going to be like the days of Noah. It will come. For as in the days before the floods, they were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Wasn't that happening? People still going to be out going to weddings. They're still going to be celebrating. They're still going to take trips. Not that God don't want us to do that, but we need to be aware of the times. Because the people of Noah's day, they weren't even aware. It says they was not aware until the flood came and swept them all away. Look at that. They were doing their own thing. And it took Noah hundreds of years to build that all because that guy was crazy. And then when God shut the door, they didn't even comprehend the disaster was going to happen. He said they didn't even get it until they were swept away. They didn't get it. I don't want to be swept away. I want to be caught up when he comes. Hallelujah. So two men will be in the field and one will be left. Two women will be gathering in the mill and one will be taken. One will be left. Therefore, stay awake for you do not know what the day of your Lord is coming. But you know this, that if the master of the house had known what part of the night that the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. If you knew a thief was coming, then you would stay up all night. Are you awake? Are you aware? Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man coming at the hour you do not expect. So we can't blame it on time. Who is a faithful and a wise servant, who is the master has set him over his household, has given him food that he may prepare pr proper time. Blessed is the servant who master will find him doing when he is coming. We're saying, blessed is the one that God sees still working, doing what he tell him to do. Truly I say to you, he will set him over all of his possessions. But if a wicked servant say to himself, my master delay, he ain't coming yet, I got time. And begin to beat the fellow servants and eat and drink with drunkenness, just living in the world, doing whatever you want to do. No thought of what God's coming. The master of that servant will come on a day when he do not expect him. And at the hour, he does not know. And he will cut him into pieces and put him with the hypocrites. They're going to wind up in hell. I ain't making no reservations for hell. Not a one. Not a one. I'm not. I want to do what I want to be found doing what he calls me to do when he cracked the sky. You had something? Okay. In that place, there will be weeping and gritting of teeth. Amen. So that's the end of our lesson. I thank you for tuning in to New Life Church of Faith, our Sunday school. And again, if you could not hear, I invite you to come in the room and gather with us. Our pastor is Pastor Thomas Miller, our First Lady Beverly Miller, and our service starts at noon. And we welcome you to the house of the Lord. Say, so may God bless you and keep you, and may his face continuously shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.